Uh, good evening, and thank you for this wonderful forum. My name is Mary Helen Berlanga, and I'm running for Nueces County Judge. I have gone to school at uh, Hamlin Junior High and Ray High School. I may have gone to school with some of you. I went to the University of Houston, South Texas College of Law, came back, met my husband. We got married. I was practicing law, had four children at the same time that I was practicing. And then I went to the State Board of Education, which was an elected position, and I served there for 30 years. So in my practice, I have dealt with the poor and the disabled, and that has been my law, lifelong work. While serving on the state board, I worked for families, you might say, because I represented the school children, I represented the parents, I represented the teachers and administrators to help them do a better job. After all of these years of service, I decided instead of concentrating on 15 and a half districts, I would focus on one, the one county that I live in, Nueces County. I would like an opportunity to serve Nueces County because I believe that there, there are several reasons, but I believe that we have jobs that we can secure by investing in our natural resources that drive our economy from Eagle Ford Shell to the drone technology to the Bayfront beaches that rang, rank among the country's most polluted due to long neglected st storm drains. I believe that we need transparency in government and we have not had enough of that. In fact, we haven't had uh, any. We have a need to serve our families. We are in a portion of the nation's most unsecured regions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Neal. Hi, I'm Lloyd Neal. I'm currently the New Oasis County Judge, and I'd like to thank all the organizations tonight for sponsoring this and allowing us to have an opportunity to come before you and whomever is watching this at home before the ball game starts. But we do appreciate this opportunity. I've been your county judge now for eight years, two terms, and I think you remember I was mayor eight years before that. And I want to thank all those people who voted for me then, and I hope they'll continue to do that. New Oasis County is really in pretty good shape. We have a great budget. We just began it October the 1st. No new debt for the county this year, seven straight years. We gave some night phrases. We've invested in technology. We've reduced our debt by about $42 million over the last seven years. We continue to look for ways to help people. County government in Texas is very different. There is no boss. There are 37 elected and appointed officials in Nueces County. Many of the elected officials are constitutional officials. So they, like me, have a constitutional responsibility to fulfill. You govern in Nueces County and county government through the budget. And I take the budget responsibilities very seriously. Uh, the budget is prepared in each county by the county judge and presented to the commissioner's court for ratification. This year, we had unanimous ratification of our budget moving forward in 2014-2015. Uh, we increased our fund balance. We're doing some nice things for our employees. We did not increase the cost this year to our employees for their health care, individual health care, and we've not done that for seven straight years under my leadership. So as we move forward over the next four years, I hope you will give me an opportunity to continue in this role, continue to work with all the other elected officials. Really, county government in, in Nueces County is not a partisan government because you have to get along. Republicans and Democrats alike are in that courthouse, and we have to get along to do what's best for the people. We are the safety net government. And county, county government is a safety net, and we have a lot to do in that area, and I'll be glad to explain that later if you ask. Thank you. Thank you. We'll start with our questions. Uh, the first is for both of you. Do you think economic diversification is necessary for Nueces County, given the fact that oil and gas boom always expires, and how do we diversify? We'll start with uh, Ms. Berlinga. I do think it's important to di diversify, and I think that um, we have uh, stopped looking at how we could develop our Highway 69, <clears throat> which is a major corridor for encouraging the establishment of more businesses. This would enable businesses to get their products to market more efficiently, and we've kind of forgotten about that. We can help Robstown obtaining their goal of an outlet mall. Everyone in Nueces County has been eager to, to shop, but we have no outlet mall yet. 
there's an EB-5 program there that can help uh, stimulate economic uh, activity, and I think we need to support that. And the commissioner's court can take a leadership role in establishing a regional airport authority that would expand our air service for both passenger services as well as shipping goods that come into our port. Thank you. Mr. Neal. When I did the state of the county address this year, I talked about this being a regional economy. We have 11, 12 counties in this region, and we, we either stand together or we fall separately. One of the most important things that we do in this region is to help develop the assets around the Port of Corpus Christi and the other assets. The Outland Mall is supposed to start construction this month. Uh, hopefully that's going to happen. I-69, we've been funding the I-69 corridor expansion in, so in the Oasis County through the Commissioner's Court. This is our third year. We're funding $800,000 in this year's budget to extend I-69 for our part of the right-of-way below Robstown through the, to the county line. So we're doing a lot of things. But this is a regional economy. We must work together as a region. The cities and the county must work together. And quite frankly, we're doing a much better job than we were eight years ago. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This next question is for Mr. Neal. Good. For the past three decades, you've been in a leadership position in the city and county while our infrastructure, roads and sewers have crumbled. Why should we reelect you the man on whose watch this city has fallen apart? Well, I like to take credit for a little more than that as mayor, but, but during the eight years that I was mayor, we passed two bond elections. We passed a bond election in 2000. It was a very small bond election, about $20, 000, $20 million worth of street work. And we completed all that street work in that bond election the next four years. In 2004, we passed another bond election that was much larger for streets. I left office in 2005. I can't tell you how that came out. But when I got elected mayor in 1997, this county and this city, this city was upside down. And it took us a long time to get our house back in order because for 10 years the city had not grown and our, bond, and our bonded indebtedness had stayed the same and our asset base, our revenue base was much smaller and it took us a long time to get over that. Thank you. This next question is for Ms. Berlongo. What do you hope to accomplish as the county judge? Well, I'm an individual that works with people after 40 years of service with the poor and the disabled. Uh, I feel that I have a lot to contribute because I'm a listener. I listen to the constituents. I listen to the people and I listen to their needs. I know they're concerned about streets. And you know, we can't say streets is just an issue that affects the city. I see the county government as uh, a, an opportunity to work with other counties in, in the region. I see it as an opportunity to work with the mayor and the city council to solve some of the issues because the issues that face us are, are very serious issues, whether it's the water issue, whether it's the uh, sewerage issue, whether it's water contamination, uh, the ozone levels, with all the industries that have come in, we want to make sure we protect the ozone levels. Uh, there are a lot of serious issues. The colonias also have not resolved their problem. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of the colonias, this question is for both of you. How will you be, um, how will you work to get more colonias recognized now that the state has given you the power to do so? We'll start with Mr. Neal. Well, thank you. We have a very active colonial program here in the county. Our commissioners are very active in that area. There are about 31 or 32 uh, colonias in Nueces County. For those who don't know, colonies are in unincorporated areas, generally in land that was sold to them on a contract for deed. There are very few services in those colonias. Our commissioners, Commissioner Jag and Commissioner Pusley, have just gotten a grant to bring water to one of our colonias. We work every day through the commissioners in the colonial areas for grants and to do what we can there. The colonias are recognized because Senator uh, Juan Chuy Hinojosa got us extended from the, uh, from the Rio Grande Valley and including Nueces County. We're eligible for grants, we're applying for those. The commissioners really are doing a great job in trying to enhance the grants that we have and do what we can to help bring water Potable, potable water as well as improve the conditions, overall conditions of drainage in the colonias. Thank you. Ms. Berlongo. 
Well, I think that it's sad that it's taken all of these years. Uh, my opponent's been, was at the city for eight years and now uh, by the end of December, he will have been in the county for eight years and yet this hasn't been resolved. They're just now writing grants. They're just now getting, uh, you know, trying to help resolve the problems. I think we need to take a more active role. Uh, one issue would be getting grants and writing other grants because one grant can, can be for the water, one can be for the drainage. You know, you can write uh, a variety of grants, but we need to work with the people and try to solve the problem. And it shouldn't be just a county issue, it should be a county issue and a city issue as well. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is for both. Do you support the present plan proposed by Krista Spahn for converting Memorial Hospital to an outpatient clinic? We'll start with Mr. Neal. Yes. Ms. Berlanga? No. I think that it's, it's very sad that we would close down a hospital at a time when we need facilities for people when they become ill. Look at what has happened in, in other areas of the state where there's an emergency, where there's a crisis, and we're over here getting rid of hospitals, we need more hospitals and more facilities. We as a county don't need to build a hospital, but we also don't need to be tearing one down. I think that it's a great injustice that when you say, I represent Nueces County, and you want to represent all the people, that you would take a hospital away from the entire west side and north side of the, of the city and leave only the south side with all the hospitals and emergency rooms. I think that's very sad, and I think that's unacceptable for our county to do that. Thank you. The next question is for both. What steps should the county take for a possible Ebola outbreak? We'll start with Ms. Berlanga. Well, it would be nice if we could maintain our uh, memorial hospital because... <laughs> There's quarantine, there's medical teams that are needed. There, you know, w we can't do it alone. Obviously, we would have to bring in the experts as did the other uh, communities, the other cities. But we would need facilities. We would need special planning for this. And I think that we would have to have a very good health department. And I'm not sure what state our health department is in because I read recently an article in the newspaper newspaper that said there were uh, a lot of conflicts going on in the health department. I would want to first secure that we had very competent people in the health department so that we could address some of these issues and then I would like to see Memorial Hospital remain. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Neal. In infectious disease control is part of the city county health department. We have a special section there. We have excellent leadership in the city county health department. It's a joint city county health department by memorandum of understanding between the city and the county. What we do there is we take care of the things that are necessary for what it says, public health and taking care of issues like AIDS and HIV, HIV issues like Ebola, other things that might come upon this community. The public health director and the public health doctor are both under the guidance and leadership of both the city manager and myself. There's a constant planning that goes on for any infectious disease. We work very closely through the city county health department and, CD and the community CDC, I think that's what it's called in Atlanta. But all of those things come under the direction of the health director and the director of the city county health department. And they work on that every day, and I think this community is prepared to deal with that through the city county health department should something like that happen. Thank you. Next question is for Mr. Neal. There had been talk about a tax increase, then there was a turnabout. Was that due to the election year? Well, I don't know about a turnabout, but the city, uh, the county has lowered the county tax rate again this year. We're using the effective tax rate on the hospital district for the second straight year and we reduced the health district tax, health department, I'm sorry, the health district, city, county, well, I'll get this right in just a moment. The, the um, health district tax by a penny, we reduced the county tax by a penny this year, a total of two cents. The taxes went up on your house if your values went up. Last year, we did the same thing. We reduced the taxes by one cent. A penny on the county tax rate is about $2.3 million out that stays in the pockets of the taxpayers. And if you look at the 
way the truth in taxation bill is written, when you lower the tax rate, if you don't use the effective tax rate, and your values go up, yes, your taxes do increase. Thank you. This last question is for Ms. Berlanga. Would you create a citizens review committee to undertake the next redistricting in light of the litigation and Justice Department complaint from the last redistricting? Well, that's an excellent question because last time it was all done in secret. The public wasn't even allowed to comment. So it would be great to have some public input and do this in a formal way open to the public so that a decision could be made. The way that it was done previously, it cost the taxpayers $158,000 according to Dr. Robert Bezdick. And so I think that anything that we can do to save our taxpayer money, we should do. And part of that responsibility is not just to uh, make that decision and redraw those lines for redistricting, but part of the responsibility is to be transparent and allow public input. That's the way county government should work. Thank you. And now we'll have one minute closing statements from each of our candidates. We'll start with Ms. Berlanga. I want you to remember when you go to the polls that Mary Helen Berlanga has dedicated her 40 years of practice to families that are poor, who are disabled, and she has dedicated 30 years of her life for the school children, parents, teachers, administrators, and families alike. Those years that I've spent in public service and in working have allowed me to see life differently from other people. I've raised four children. I was a wife until my husband died in 2009. I, I have, I'm a grandmother of three children, and I worry about their future. And right now, part of this future, they're inheriting our taxes. Memorial Hospital will be gone, but that hospital district tax is going to be on the, a burden on their shoulders. And we're going to see that grow if our home values go up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Well, I'd like to thank you again for letting us come here tonight. I'd also like to thank the organizations this year who have endorsed my reelection, the Home Builders Association, the Realtors Association, the Police Officers Association, and the Nueces County uh, Officers Association, and yesterday, the Caller Times. But more importantly, I'd like to thank the voters who have endorsed me, reelecting me four times as mayor and twice as county judge. And I think they did that, or you did that, because one thing, you recognize that this position takes strong leadership. Uh, you recognize that this position, along with that of being mayor, requires someone who can make decisions and make good decisions based on the facts. But more importantly, I think you recognize that we have moved the city forward for eight years, and we've con have consolidated and moved the county forward for eight years. So as my signs say, experience counts. I'd like for you to look at the record look at the experience of the two candidates, see who has had leadership positions in local government and military, and I hope you'll support me again for re-election. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. You may return to your seat in the audience.